So for the continuation of our discussion about remedial instruction and listening, let us now move on how to improve students' listening comprehension. So first, it is suggested for the teachers to teach pronunciation, stress, and intonation of the critical sounds of English. So we might have noticed that when a speaker says something, certain words or phrases have a higher pitch while others have a lower pitch. So, by listening the rules of intonation and stress and unstressed syllables, we will also be able to know the various sounds and pronunciation of words specifically in the English language. So, actually hearing the way that pitch and stress change in a natural conversation, it will help us to execute correct intonation and stress syllable when we speak. Thus, um, it will also give us the chance to develop our listening comprehension skills. Next, it teach the students to practice sound discrimination, liaisons, and incomplete plosives. So when we say, so, so for the number two, it has something to do with linguistics. When we say sound discrimination, or also known as the auditory discrimination, it focuses on the ability of an individual to recognize compare and distinguish between distinct and separate sounds so it allows a person to tell the difference between words and sounds that are similar as well as words and sounds that are different so one good example is the word 40 and 14 they may sound alike but they have different meaning next is liaisons so what do we mean by liaisons? According to Oxford Dictionary, liaisons is the intro introduction of a consonant between a word that ends in a vowel and another that begins with a vowel, as in English law and order. So when we say liaisons, it is the linking of sounds or words. So basically, the linking of words and sounds happens when the sounding of a consonant is normally silent at the end of the word because the next word begins with a vowel so later i will give an example some example of the basic liaisons next is the incomplete plosives first plosives um is defined as a consonant that is produced by stopping the airflow using the lips feet or palate followed by a sudden release of air the basic plosives in english are th the sound of th K, P, or also known as voiceless plosives, and the sounds D, G, uh, or the letters D, G, and B, or also known as the voiced plosives. So, for here, here are some of the examples of the liaisons, plosives, and incomplete plosives. So, when we say incomplete plosives, it is when a plosive sound is immediately followed by another plosive sound so as what we have be as what i have said earlier liaisons i are plosives rather can be distinguished into voiceless and voiced plosives so in, in here in incomplete plosives we are talking about the involvement of two plosives in a specific word so here are some of the example for liaisons. So as what I have said earlier, liaisons are the linking of sounds and words. So instead of um, pronouncing these words as far away, pick up, very old, give it up, it should be or it must be pronounced as connected to each, uh, is, it is pronounced as connected to each other for example it should be pronounced as far away pick up very old give it up that it should that is how it should be pronounced next for the plosives we have here the voiceless and the voice plosives which for the voiceless we have the theme kid path and for the voice plosives we have dine get bug the here here is some of the examples of the plosives now we move on the incomplete plosives or plosion which involves two plosives in a given word for example the sound ka in acting in which we have two voiceless plosives 
Next is the song G. In begged, we have two voiced plosives, which is the G sound. Next is the DV sound at advance. We have voiced plosives. And lastly, the TB sound in football, in which we have their one voiceless and one voiced plosives. So next, on how next um, suggestion on how to improve students' listening comprehension is to help them recognize stressed and unstressed words. So it deals with the stress, the words is stress. So there, it is essential for the students to recognize the rules for stressed and unstressed syllables. Next is to enrich their vocabulary so it can you can make a list of unfamiliar words let them use these words in conversation or ask them to keep a diary um, listen to english shows or films and listen to some recorded conversation or audio books and such it can help them to enrich their vocabulary in by encountering some words that are not familiar to them Next is to teach them grammar. We all know that grammar is a set of rules that explain how words are used in are used in a language. So it is important that the foundational knowledge of the students are wide in terms of knowing the sentence structure, the subject verb agreement, the correct pronounce, pronouns used, etc. It will help the learner to truly by knowing the grammar, it will help the learner to speak correctly as well as to develop their listening comprehension. So, if poor pitch is modeled to the students, it will become the standard of the students in learning the grammar as well as in speaking the language itself. Next is practicing inferring information that are not directly stated. So, in here, it is important to teach the student to find clues to get some answers. Then add, ask them to add those clues to what they already know and the, or their, um, explain it to them that there can be more than answer in, uh, in a specific scenario or you ask them to take a guess on what are the things that had been stated in the message or from the recorded conversation and such and be able to support their inferences from what they have heard next is to help students to improve their skills in predicting teach that the student it is important to teach the students on how to listen or look for the clues think about what they already know and then let them to take a guess so that they can foretell on the basis of observation experiences and on their own reasons so lastly you can teach them on some note-taking skills so some note-taking skills include um, they can write phrases not in full sentences it, they can take notes in their own words they can use headings sub headings or they can use um, some symbols, abbreviations, or they can utilize concept maps and diagrams for them to be able to listen comprehensively and then at the same time develop their understanding on what they have heard. So they can so after after um after they have heard a specific um listening passage, they can be able to look back on the important informations that they need from from knowing on how to assist students in their um, listening comprehension let us now move on what are the possible classroom activities that can be employed inside the classroom to improve their listening skills so in today's digital world many teachers struggle to get their students to engage in active listening while they teach so it's become much harder to get and keep students attention mostly because students mind are filled with technology social media updates or whatever is going on with their friends 
um, virtually. So, there are students who cannot concentrate or they lack of motivation to listen. So, most of the time, they find listening activities really boring. We, can, we cannot deny that fact, right? So, if students are struggling to listen, then they can miss out on some crucial information that can help them both academically and socially. So, listening is an essential skill that students need to develop. So, if they have um, poor listening comprehension skills, it will be difficult for them to understand and analyze the things and informations, information rather, around them. So, teaching listening skills to students doesn't have to be boring. Students do not just have to sit in their seats and listen to their teacher. There are many classroom activities to create engaging lessons that will help students focus on their listening skills. So there are a lot of activities that can be executed inside the classroom. You can think of, you can think of your own or you can um, search for activities in the internet that best suits for your students. So here are five classroom activities to try out that will help the students in developing their listening comprehension skills. So first is entitled as the one of the first classroom activities is entitled as the hidden praise. So in this class in this activity in here the students will work by pair. They are required to create their own praise. Um, it can be anything they want and pre present it to their classmates. So the challenge is to use the hidden praise in their dialogue. So the classmates goal is to listen and figure out the hidden praise so each group that guesses it correctly will get one point so if no one guesses the hidden praise the pair who wrote the praises gets the point so that is the first activity now let's move on on the second possible activity that you can utilize is entitled as the describe the photo so in here the students will work by pair then have them to sit back to back so make sure that the photos you use are simple it can be a house a cat or a dog so that it is easier for the students to describe the shapes so the group with the most similar drawings with the actual photo wins so this game will challenge the listener to listen attend to listen attentively on what the speaker says to him in order to draw the picture uh, to draw the picture accurately next the third activity is entitled does to stand up and listen so in here the students are tasked to listen for a repeated sound or phrase so after they after they hear it completely they must stand up next to their seat and repeat the praise they have heard so once the students done it right they will work by pair and they will be doing their own praises then they will take turns in playing stand up and listen and that is that is the activity next is the fourth activity is what we call locating the square so this activity is similar with the describing the photo activity. So the activity will force the students to listen to, to listen to listen intently to complete the challenge. So they will also work in pairs. So one the, the one one student will be a give will be given a grid, so just like a tic-tac-toe as what you have seen in the picture, with complete shapes in each of this in each of the square so while well, the other student will be given a blank grid his or her task is to draw the shapes correctly according to the description of the other student holding the paper in which in where the shapes was properly located next the last activity that you can use is to listen with lyrics so this is a this is a great activity for students to practice unfamiliar words and have their attention as well. So the use of music as a total, as a as a tool, um, in helping the students to develop their listening skills is engaging and effective, since most of them loves to listen various genres of music. So allow the students to listen a song 
that were not familiar to them. Then give them the task to listen for a specific um, to a specific word or a phrase. So once the students done and write, ask them to listen for a specific phrase from the song. After that, play a popular song and repeat the activity. So those are the five activities that can that you can use inside the classroom that can assist your students to improve their listening skills or their listening comprehension skills. Now, let us move on on how to enhance your listening as an individual. So it is important for students to continually develop their listening skills, right? So by having um, students engage in a variety of classroom activities, you will help them to develop their skills. So how to enhance your listening um, skills? First is the key is to be a serious listener and be an open-minded listener. So, so to be a serious listener, first we will tackle about on how you should resist distractions in order for you to listen effectively. So first, distractions can come in all shapes and sizes. So we all know that distractions are everywhere. So try to prioritize listening and reflecting rather than entertaining distractions. Next, learning how to tune out distractions enables people to be better listeners. So people must learn how to resist distractions so they can better focus on what they are trying to hear. Next, in order to best focus on speaker's message, try to eliminate as many distractions as possible. So, try to focus on the speaker. If possible, sit in the front, physically facing the speaker. So, then turn off your mobile devices or relocate to a quiet space so you can listen effectively. So, distractions can come into two broad types it can be external and external so external distractions often come in the form of physical noise in the physical environment so the most identifiable um, types of external distractions can be auditory visual or the physical noise so when we say physical noise it can uh, be the lack of the preparation, the, the listener's inadequate, inadequate sleep. So when we say auditory, is it can come from the loud or extreme, extraneous noises. So you know, or maybe your classmates or colleagues interrupting while you are listening. And lastly, the visual. It can be through the excessive images or the room lighting. Next is the internal distraction of uh, often refers to the psychological and emotional noise so it can also originate um, internally or can be physical responses to the environment so it can be you feeling upset stress or physically uncomfortable or thinking about other Topic. So that is how you should resist distractions in order to be a serious listener. Next is to listen actively. So active listening is a communication technique that requires the listener to feedback what they hear to the speaker. So when we say active listening, it is a, it is a technique that requires the listener to give their feedbacks on what he or she hears from the speaker so it involves listening with all of all of our senses so the listener fully concentrates on what is being said rather than pass rather than just passively hearing the message of the speaker next it also involves observing and assessing the speaker's behavior and body language so the listener needs to comprehend he or she needs to pay attention to the speaker's verbal and non-verbal language to fully understand what they are trying to communicate it can be through eye contact body posture on hand gestures next 
Most often, listeners will do this by restating or paraphrasing what they have heard in their own words. So, the listener um, uses paraphrasing as a technique in showing or understanding what they have heard. So, it allows the listener to reflect what is being said. Remember key points of what the speaker's uh, message it confirms that both parties, both the speaker and the listener, understand each other. So, it also helps them to better retain that information not only for few, for present but for also for the listener's future access. Next is if someone is actively listening, then he or she is typically not distracted. Speakers can also cultivate the habit of avoiding distractions. So on, on the other hand, to avoid distractions and be able to get the attention of the listeners or the audience, the speaker can also address question to them so that they can participate in that session or in that specific activity. Next, it involves observing and assessing the speaker's behavior and body language and relaying that information back to the speaker as well. So, recognizing speaker's behavior and body language lets the listener um, to develop a more accurate understanding of the speaker's message. So, if they are not able to respond to this nonverbal language and the listener in the listener engages only on the content this can limit the listener's understanding of what is the message of the speaker next the ability to listen actively demonstrates sincerity on the part of the listener and helps to make sure that no information is being assumed or taken for granted so the listener was able to fully concentrate understand they will be able to respond and then remember what is being said. So the, the listener listens for accuracy. So they acknowledge the message, look for information, reflect to it what they have already know, give judgment, and provide feedback on what they have learned, on what or what uh, they have heard from the speaker. Lastly, active listening is most often used to improve personal relationships, reduce misunderstanding and conflicts, strengthen cooperation, and foster understanding. So, listening actively can help the, le the learner or the listener in both academically and socially. Either they are inside or outside the classroom. So, it is important to, li to be to enhance your listening in terms of on how you resist the distractions and at the same time on how to listen actively. Next, to, to enhance your listening, you should be an open-minded listening. So, it can be uh, open-minded listening requires empathy and a suspension of judgment on the part of the listener so when we say empathy it is the capacity to understand another person's point of view or the results of such understanding um, it is to listen under the words to appreciate the speaker's pov and then acknowledge the speaker's message when we say judgment it is the evaluation of evidence in making of a decision so the evaluation from what you hear and then you make a judgment so, to sus on how to suspend judgment to en 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 enhancing your listening, it should you should be someone who listens with an open mind that is willing to be influenced by, by, by what he or she hears. So, it does not require, uh, it does require rather, the listener to be willing to consider the merit of what other people says. Next, People who listen with an open mind avoid anticipating what they think their conversational partners are going to say. So, the listener do not jump into conclusions but rather hear the speaker out entirely and make an effort to understand what he or she says. Next, carrying preconceived notions about the speaker or the content of a speech into a conversation further limits effective listening so 
we all know that all people have their own opinions on just about everything right so when they listen there is a tendency to immediately judge what the other people says so the listener's notion of i am right i am right i am right rather than being an open-minded of what the speaker way may share to them can lead to misconceptions and misunderstanding so what is the definition of judgmental listening so judgmental listening also occurs when the listener when the listener is only listening to the speaker in order to determine whether he or she is right or wrong rather than listening to understand the speaker's ideas and where they came from so when we say judgmental listening so um this kind of listening prevents the listener from fully engaging with the speaker so it limits the listener to understand the message because the listener's opinions overpowers the message or the content of the speaker because they had these preconceived notions or their they have their own opinions that hinders them to listen effectively so becoming aware of preconceived notions listening to the entire speech before jumping to conclusion and listening to what the speaker has to say for understanding not just to determine whether the speaker is right or wrong this is what we call the suspend um, judgment so in here the listener actively listens with the speaker and tries to understand what he or she says before jumping into conclusion the reason why you listen and to, why you listen is to learn something from the speaker not to prove whether the speaker is right or wrong about um, their argument lastly to listen effectively one must work them well, one must work to temporarily suspend those associations in order to understand the speaker on his or her own terms so to listen effectively learn to refrain from giving instant opinions take time and pause to understand what are the speaker's message to you strive to find common grounds with your speaker rather than judging them aside from suspending your judgment in enhancing your listening you should learn how to exercise empathy so exercising empathy while listening to a speaker is related to suspending um, judgment in that it requires the listener to work to understand what the speaker says from his or her um, point of view so it does not necessarily mean that the listener must automatically agree with the speaker the listener should put himself um, or herself in the speaker's shoes and try to see the presented information from that perspective next listening with empathy lets the listener better understand where the speaker is coming from emotionally and conceptually so learn to appreciate the speaker's um feeling you are striving to experience and see the world from the speaker's perspective so avoid assuming you know this you know already um the speaker's perspective next is one of the primary jobs of an effective listener is to get in touch with the speaker's perspective and not to color it with his or his own point of view so all we need is to set aside our opinions and needs and truly hear them with an open mind so remind yourself that it does not necessarily mean that i agree with you that notion that i agree with you so exercising empathy helps you to understand the speaker's perspective remember that you are listening for accuracy next exercising empathy allows the listener to take into account where the speaker is coming from both emotionally and in terms of the content of his or her speech so this lets the listener assess what the speaker says and how it is presented so this ultimately leads to a better understanding for 
the listener. So here are some tips for being an open-minded listener. First, leave ego at the door. Come to the presentation with the mind like a blank slate. So as a listener, avoid going your way and refrain from selective hearing. Listen without judging the person and without jumping into conclusions without knowing the entire message next when disagreeing with the speaker write down the objections rather than turning out the presenter so do not interrupt the speaker and do not impose your opinions or solutions you can ask for questions and clarifications af after the after the speaker sees stated his or her message next be open to new ideas or new ways of thinking so recognize everyone has various um views and perspectives always bear in mind that there are thoughts from the speaker's message that you can find useful and worthy for listening lastly look for opportunities to share common ground with the speaker such as beliefs, ideologies, or experiences. So allow your mind to create, um, to create uh, a mode, a model of information being communicated. So it help you should focus on the speaker's message rather than um, criticizing what he or she tells you. So give the speaker a chance to finish what they are saying it can be something that the speakers touch on diverts your attention and allows you to focus more and understand the message better from the speaker's perspective as well so aside from that i have prepared for you according to emily smith what are the top five creative ways to boost the students' listening skills inside the classroom so it is the suggestions coming from Emily Smith. So according to Emily Smith, nothing is more um, difficult than teaching when your students are not listening to you, specifically in learning a, phys uh, in learning a foreign language. So first, Emily Smith suggested that have a daily buzzword. So at the start of the day or every day, pick a new vocabulary word. Then every time your students hear, hear you or everyone else in the class say the word he or she should raise his his or her heart his or her arm then the teacher may give token or awards to them next learn to paraphrase so whenever you say a few lines stop and pick a pick a student to paraphrase what has been stated so in that way you can know who is listening and who is not it, it can also help you to assess their comprehension level as well. Next is to change voices. So to be a good listener, students need to be able to comprehend different accents or ways of speaking coming from various speakers. So when you are the only one talking, your students might get comfortable with your voice. Though it is not a bad thing, right? But changing things up a bit or specifically your way of speaking or your accent by changing your accent and body language can cut the student's attention and make the class fun also while listening. Next, show your students some video clips. So it is a great help for your students to become um, better listeners. Ask the students to paraphrase or answer a few questions about what was said in the video clip and see how much they were able to understand in its content. Lastly, teach your students about body language. So technically, a good listener will understand everything thoroughly even if he or she has his or her eyes closed. But the truth is, even native speakers tend to rely a lot on body language to hear what is said, specifically in actual situation where listening occurs. So by helping your students understand relevant body language, you are helping him or her to improve overall listening and language 
comprehension. So that is all of our discussion about remedial instruction and listening. We are finished discussing what are the differences um, what are the differences in hearing and listening? What are the factors that affects your listening comprehension? As well as we are, we were able to discuss um, on how to improve your students' listening skills. What are the various activities that you can utilize inside the classroom? And lastly, uh, how to enhance your listening as an individual as well. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you for listening.